and I'd like to introduce actually Dr. Richard Hodes, the director of the National Institute on Aging. Thank you, John. It's a, it's a privilege to uh, be able to make some brief remarks here at the close of the session. And I'd actually like to begin by a look backward to a day more than a decade ago when I received a phone call from a remarkably elegant and gracious voice that identified itself as, as Lee Dockery, who wanted to discuss the possibility that we might have some common interests around the area of aging and its impact on cognitive function. Uh, there were partnerships around Alzheimer's disease and dementia, uh, but there was not much in the way of public-private partnerships in the area that's been the topic of these last three summits. And it turned out to be the beginning of just an enormously valuable partnership and collaboration. The elegance and graciousness continue, as you see witnessed uh, each day here. We began by looking at projects that we might co-fund, and that's been highly successful, but uh, arguably the greatest leverage has been in meetings and summits such as this, which have been unique opportunities, really, to bring together the breadth and quality of expertise of people with ideas that have allowed us to move forward in the most effective way. And this third summit is the epitome of this to date, though I'm sure we can rise still higher in the future. So on the basis of all the fantastic science that we've heard, the elegance, the new approaches, we'll be going on to discuss implications for research and try to make the best of the input that we've gotten from the enormous amount of wisdom we have here uh, to help provide the opportunities for still further research in the purpose in the future. So all of this, your wisdom, and Congress willing, uh, we'll be back uh, together in years to come when we'll have still more of this important research to, to continue. And so uh, finally, my very greatest pleasure is to introduce to you the man very much responsible for all this, Lee Dockery. Lee. My goodness, how can you upstage that? Uh, it's, it, it's a remarkable experience to uh, live through this decade and to tell you that I'm 84 and I haven't had a blood transfusion. <laughs> uh, this conference has just been monumental and I'll get more to that before, but I think we have a lot of things to say today in terms of thinking of the staff and the people who put this together. I'd like you for just a moment to open your programs to the front panel where it says special thanks. This advisory committee has put together this program, but you'll also notice there is no individual name that says program director or anything of that sort that really put the skeleton and the fabric together. And of course, you all know who those are, Molly Waxter and John King. Please stand and let us give you this prolonged and enthusiastic applause. Yes, the standing ovation is permitted. And of course, you notice that there have not been any Academy Award events in this, in this session. And the person responsible for that is Dr. Adam Steinwitz. He's, it's just been remarkable the way we have been on schedule, on task, all the technology has worked. Please thank Adam. Adam, please come forward so we can see you. Adam Steinwitz. And finally, it's very important. I know that you noticed how the breaks have been so functional with good selections of refreshment, uh, the dinner, uh, the arrangements, posters that give direction. Let us please thank unanimously the foundation staff for the F Foundation for the National Institutes of Health. Please, a separate applause. <laughs> and now to you, Dr. Hodes. Uh, I'm glad to hear you say that we need to have more of these functions in the future because over the 10 years, I've only seen you four times, so <laughs> I look forward to many more. <laughs> and of course, behind that also is my abiding gratitude to Dr. Hodes that he's been receptive to our concept of trying to help people to age successfully. So thank you very much for that, because you've been the, the dynamo behind it. 
Now, also notice in this session, I've been to all three, we've had 24 uh, presentations, we've had six panel leaders, and we have three snapshots, as Dr. Albert calls them. Uh, we've had all the presentations that we've had in the previous Cognitive Aging Summits, and as a public representative, I would say, have you told me where I can find my keys? So I think we need to get to that point sometime in the future. And we have the human genome. We have the National Brain Initiative. We have artificial intelligence. We have three matrix films that my children and grandchildren have still not been able to explain to me how machines can be better than humans. So I think we need to find out uh, what we know, what we don't know, and let's put it together. Uh, I humorously, I thought it was humor, but at the 2010, I said, lock the doors, because all the talent that can solve this is in this room. And I believe that. But as a segue into that, I think we, with the limitation of funding that we have, we're going to have to share data more. We're going to have to communicate better. And we have to use technology to uh, penetrate, as uh, one of the speakers said today, to bring all this together. And maybe we need to have a Manhattan Project to just lock us up and find out what we know, what we don't know. But the bottom line is we need to help people age successfully and to keep mentally sharp. Thank you all also, individually and collectively, for the wonderful participation and the wonderful speakers that have donated their time to this effort. Thank you very much.